time, he's been considered the national poet of Scotland. He was born in 1759, died in 1796. Uh, he, uh, and when he was a child, about from the, the almost from the day he was able to run around, there was a locally there was a little kirk. Now this, the word kirk means church, a small church in their neighbourhood, and had a graveyard, of course. And him and his young brother, as they grew up to be about seven years old, when the, when the family finally moved away from that area, they of course played in the graveyard and hid behind the stones and 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 played hide and seek with each other in the stones. And uh, his mother had a relative who was a servant uh, who helped on the farm. And she had lots of stories about ghosts and baubles and brownies and changelings and fairies and, and little people and what have you. And Burns had all of this in his head. So Burns becomes a famous poet eventually. And uh, the year's about 1789 when he's approached by, uh, or, or when he's introduced to uh, uh, a, 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 an, a retired English soldier who had just written the, the Antiquities of England, and he was in the process of writing The Antiquities of Scotland. So he was touring Scotland to, to, to view the castles and the cathedrals and what have you, and Burns asked him to do something on the old kirk at Alloway. Now the old kirk in, in Scottish culture, or in the south of Scotland, the old kirk is famous for its ghost stories and what have you. And so Burns, and, and so Mr. Gross says, yeah, I'll do something on it. Uh, it says, if you will write me a piece of prose explaining it. And Burns says, yeah, sure. So Burns actually threw him, threw him three pieces of prose. And the one that was chosen was the, the, the middle one. And, 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 and of course, Burns worked on it some more. And by the year of seven, it was published, it first published in 1791 in the Edinburgh Magazine, uh, but it was really more or less finished maybe around uh, 1789, early in 1789, and his, his wife maintained they went out there on the banks of the, of the Nith and, and, and wrote and put it in his head in one day, which is impossible, you know, but he, he did polish it eventually and it became the most uh, he considered him, himself, he considered it his masterpiece, and he has many, many great poems. Anyway, uh, um, and, and besides, the, the, the poem involves the Kirk of Alloway, also in, in, involves a farmer who goes to the town of Ayr every week to get his supplies. And of course, this was his most important supply, you know, every week, and he sat there all night until he couldn't, could hardly get home, and his wife was at home waiting for him, growling and ready for him coming in the door with a hammer in her hand. And, uh, and of course, uh, the, the, the gentleman's name was Douglas Graham, and, and he was notorious for this weekly drunken feast that he went out on. And, and he also he, he ran the farm of Shanter, or Shanter Farm. He also he lived right on the coast between Ireland and right on the coast, looking at Ireland almost. And uh, he was known. He had a little boat called Tama Shanter, and uh, he uh, was known to to import a little anti-government brandy or whatever was available, you know, to, to haul in without paying the tax man, you know. And and so it was into all this stuff and. And people knew about it, so Burns put them into the poem. And, and so here is, here is uh, Tam O'Shanter, he's gone into the town of Ayr, he's been sitting there all afternoon, took care of very little business other than this, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 he, and, and this is the situation. As Chapman Billies leave the street and Druthy neighbours neighbours meet, as market days are wearing late and folk begin to tack the cake, while we sit bowsing at the nappy and getting foo and unco happy, we think nah the lang Scot smiles, the mosses water slaps and styles that lie between us and our hame, where sits our sulky sullen dame, gathering brows like gathering storms, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. 
This truth fand honest Tamashanter as he fre air a night did canter. Oh, there were ne'er a town surpasses for honest men and bonny lasses. Ah, Tam, hadst thou but been so wise as take thy young wife Kate's advice, she told thee weel thou was a skellum, a blaring, blustering, drunken blellum that fre November till October, a market day that was na sober, ill to ev it was not sober, we have lost the place here. Um, uh, um. Was this sober? The ill camelda with the miller that sat as lang as thou hast cellar. That every nag was caught a shoe on the smith and thee got roaring through on. And at the Lord's hoof, even on Sunday, thou drank we kept in jean till Monday. She prophesied that later soon thou be found deep drowned in doom, or catched by warlocks in the back by Alloway's old haunted kirk. Ah, gentle dames at Garsme greet, to think how many counsels sweet, how many length and sage advices the husband free, the wife despises. But to your tale, a market night, Tam get planted unco right, fast by an ingle, bleezing finely, with rumen swats that drank divinely, and at his elbow suitor Johnny, his ancient trusty Druthy crony. He, he, Tam load him like a very brother. They've been foo for weeks together. The night drave on with sangs and clatter, and I the ill was growing better. The landlady and Tam grew gracious, gracious with favour sweet and precious. The suitor told his queerest story. The landlord's laugh was ready chorus. The storm round out without when I rare and rustle. Tam didn't mind a storm a whistle. Tear mad to see a man say happy, he endrooned himself. A man but happy, and his bees flee him with laids a treasure. The minutes wing their way with pair pleasure. Kings may be blessed, but Tam was glorious o'er all the ills of life victorious. But pleasures are like poppies spread. You seize the flower, its broom is shed, or like the snow falls in the river, a moment white, then melts forever. Or like the Borealis race that flits ere you can point their place. Or like the rainbows of lovely form, evanishing amid, amid the storm. Nay man can tell her time or tide. The hour approaches Tam one right. That hour of night black arch the key stain. That dreary hour he mounts his beast in. And sick a night he tacks the road in. As near poor sinner was a broad in. The wind blues was blown its last, the rattling shells rose on the blast, the speedy gleams that darkness swallowed, loud, deep and lang, the thunder bellowed. That night a child might understand that he had business on his hand. Will mounted on his grey mare Meg, a better never lifted leg, with Tam Skelpit owned through dub and mire, despising wind and rain and fire, while holding fast his kid blue bonnet, whilst crooning our some old Scotch sonnet, whilst drowning round with prudent cares, lest travels catch him unawares. Kirkalloway was coming nigh, where geese and howlets nightly cry. By this time he was across the ford, where in the snaw the chapman smurred, and past the burks and meekle stain, where drunken jarley brack's necked bane, and through the winds and by the cairn, where hunters found the murdered wearn, the bairn, and dear the thorn aboon the well, where Mungo's mother hanged herself. Before him doom pours all his floods, the doubling storm rose through the woods, the lightning flashed from pole to pole, near him or near the thunder rolled, when glimmering through the groaning trees, Kirk Alloway seemed in a breeze, through ill cup o'er the beams were glancing, and loud resounded mirth and dancing. Inspiring bold John Barley Corn, what day just thou can make a scorn? We tippany, we fear nae evil, we us go be, we'll face the devil. The swat serene in Tammy's noddle, fair play he cared, and a deal's a bottle. But Maggie stood right, sair astonished, till by the heel in hand admonished, she ventured forward on the light. And wow, Tam saw an uncold sight. Warlocks and witches in a dance, naked cotillion by new face from France, but horn spikes, jigs through spades and reels, put life and metal in their heels. And I went a bunker in the east, there sat old Nick, 
in shape of beast. A towsy tight black grim and large, to give the music was his charge. And he screwed the pipes and got them still, till roof and rafter added diddle. And coffins stood round like open presses that showed the dead in their last dresses. And by supper some devilish cane trip slight, each in its cauldron held a light. By which heroic Tam was able to note upon the hilly table a murderer's banes and gibbet ears, twa spang lang we and christened bairns, a thief new cut at fair rape, with his last gasp at gapped cape, five tomatox hawks with blood red rusted, five scimitars with murder crusted, a garter which a babe had strangled, a knife a father's throat had mangled. Who's ain son of life bereft? That grey hairs yet stag to the hef, would made a horrible and awful, would even to name would be unlawful. <sighs> As Tammy glowered, amazed and curious, the mirth and fun grew fast and furious, the piper loud and loud and blew, and and the dancers quick and quicker flew. They reeled the set, the crows they click it, to ilka carl and swat and reek it, and coos to duddies to the work, and link it at it in her sack. Ah, Tam, ah, Tam, had they been queens, all plump and strapping in their teens, their sacks instead of creasy flannin, been snow white seven hundred linen, their breeks my my mine, my only pair that was once were plush a good blue hair. I took tain them off my hardies, for a blink of the body birdies. But withered Belgium's old and drool, rig woody hats would spin a foul, loupin' and flinging like a crummet. No wonder didn't he woo turn thy stomach. But Tam Kent what was what through brawly? There was a winsome wench in Wally that night enlisted in the door, lying after Kent on Carrick shore. For many a beast to death she shot, and perished many a bonny boat, and shook both meekle corn and bear, and kept the countryside in fear. A cutty sack of paisley ham, that while a lassie she had worn, and longed to cheat though sorely scanty, it was her best and she was fanty. Ah, little Ken, her reverend granny, that sap she coughed for her wee nanny. Twelve pounds Scots, or twelve, twas her riches, that ever graced a dance of witches. But here my muse, her wingman clue, sick flights are far beyond her power, to sing how nanny lap and flang, a supple jade she was in strang, and how Tam stood like ain bewitched, and thought his very ean enriched. Even Satan glowered and fitched through fain, and hawked and blew wi micht and main, till first a caper sin another, to tint his reason all together, and roars out, Well done, Cutty Sark! And in an instant all was dark, and scarcely had he Maggie rallied, when out the hellish region sallied, as bees besought with angry fight, when plundering hares assailed their bite, as open pussies mortal foes, when pop she starts before their nose, as eager runs the market crowd, when catch the thief resounds aloud, so Maggie runs the witches follow with many a neldrick screech and hollow. Ah, Tam, ah, Tam, thou get thy fairin, and hell they'll roast thee like a heron. In vain thy Kate awaits thy coming, Kate soon will be a woeful woman. Now do thy speedy utmost, Meg, and win the key stain o' the brick. There at them thou thy tail may toss, a running stream they dare not cross. But ere the key stain she could make, the fiend a tail she had to shake. For nanny far before the rest, Hard upon noble Maggie pressed, and flew at Tam with furious ettle, but little was she Maggie's mettle. He sprang brought off her master tail, but left behind a rain grey tail. The carling plowed her by the rump, and left poor Maggie scarce a stump. Now why this tale of truth shall read, ilk man and mother son tack heed, and when they drink the are inclined, Jack, remember Cutty sat in your mind, the furry for the joys o'er dear. Remember Tamar Shanter's mere. <laughs>